Fishing is a game of luck, but we can't control our luck, but what we can control is our knowledge. One of the biggest questions in fishing is, when are the fish biting? What triggers them to feed? The answer is conditions. So here are my extremely scientific weather patterns. These conditions are so elite that you'll be predicting hurricanes, tornadoes, and you'll be working for the weather channel in no time. <laughs> you see, fishing is very scientific, and I don't like to look at it from a luck perspective. I have a limited amount of time to fish, so over time I've been able to write down a log on what conditions played out when I caught a certain fish. I've been able to correlate all the data to pinpoint when the fish are more likely to bite. That has sent me so many trips. And I've been scummed a couple times, but that's okay though. Now I'm going to go ahead and start out my list with the websites and apps that I use. I like to combine tides for fishing, weather underground, magic seaweed, and if you live in Galveston, you're lucky because Saltwater Recon is one of the best websites to show you real-time webcams for the water conditions, clarity, and everything. One of the best websites out there for sure. I use tides for fishing to look at the atmospheric pressure, which in my opinion is one of the most important aspects of fishing conditions. There's a UV index also, I don't look at that, I'm dark, <laughs> I don't get sunburned. And here's the water temperature, this is important because certain fish like specific temperatures around the year. Here is where it gets important though. This graph here is the bite prediction through the Solunar. This can be very accurate sometimes, it's at least accurate most mornings. And as you can see here, the most active times are during the tidal changes and the lunar transits. Major activity during moon up and at the sunrise, which is the moon set. At 1.46, the moon down, and at 8.18, the moon rise. The solar theory is the effects that the moon and sun influence all life on Earth. And this happens to be when the fish tend to eat. And just to make this very simple, is just look at this and you'll be good. <laughs> Next up is Weather Underground. I like to look at Weather Underground because it gives me an extensive weather synopsis. It is very comprehensive. Here are some of the helpful windows that I look at. But, <laughs> but hold up. Air quality window is not accurate. This is saying air quality is great around here. We know the damn well that's a flat out lie. I do remember during the ITC plan explosion that it said that the air quality was great. <laughs> Just disregard that one. But it, besides that, it's pretty accurate most of the time. But my favorite part of this website is the atmospheric pressure graph. The graph here gives you the pressure hourly in combination with the temperature, the rain chances, and the wind direction. All this is laid out easily visible on the screen. And look, look, check this out. You see this? I, I see something very interesting in regards to the rising pressure, the moonrise, and the time. But I'll explain that at the end once I put everything together. Next up is really one of my favorite conditions, if not the most favorite, the barometric pressure. You see, I think that barometric pressure is almost often overlooked, and I think it's extremely important, honestly. Fish sense pressure, especially intra fish such as redfish, jacks, drum, tarpon jacks, and you know where I'm going, right? And according to Spud Woodward, the assistant director of the Georgia Department of Natural Resources, at the time, he wrote in 2012 that when there's less pressure squeezing the fish's bladder, their bladders actually expand a bit. The fish become more uncomfortable which then causes the fish to move into deeper water. You see, but when this happens, the fish ain't worried about eating. And again, according to Woodward, fish are much more comfortable when there's a stable high pressure. And you see, that's why barometric pressure is extremely important. And you see, another thing is that when it comes to barometric pressure, one thing that I also like to look at is before we have a front, the pressure is most of the time it's usually high or mid-high range. Before a front, the fish detect that there is a front coming. When a front is coming, the pressure tends to drop drastically. So when the pressure is up high, right before the front comes in, the fish starts to eat a lot. That's when you get a major feeding period. And look, this is what happens here. You get these crazy pictures where people are catching jags, rays, and everything. This is before fronts or when the pressure is pretty high. Now, once the pressure drops, that's when the front comes in and the fishing is pretty slow. Now, a day after the front, the pressure starts to slowly rise again and it starts to stabilize, but the fish aren't really eating because they're trying to adjust to the pressure. Now, two days later or so, after the pressure's finally up and high and it's been stabilized, the fish are extremely hungry. So, I like to fish when the pressure is up really high and it's about to drop, or a few days later after the pressure's been pretty low. Like Spud Woodward said, low pressure means slow. All right, so we have the ass that we look at, but now this is how I combine everything to exactly pinpoint when I'm gonna fish. Remember earlier in the video, I mentioned that I saw something very interesting. So here it is. 
So, here is Weather Underground, and luckily I am off Monday through Thursday this week. I, I sometimes I'm off four days, it's pretty badass. But anyways, so Monday is out of the question because I get off of work at 7 a.m., but man, the wind looks real good. Look at that, real nice southeast winds, and possible clean water on Monday morning. Tuesday morning comes around and it's looking real good also. We'll have a couple hours of subtle southeast winds. Before we also had medium range southeast winds, which means that the water at the jetties is probably going to be nice and clean that day. Real good, that's nice. You see, usually we can fish for like Spanish mackerel jacks and if it were summer, you could probably fish for kings then. Alright, so, like I mentioned before, so that the fish go into feeding mode right before the pressure starts to really plummet, which is typical before a storm or a front. So check this out though, this is perfect. There's a storm that's coming through on Wednesday. Wednesday evening to be exact. Well, the pressure starts to slowly rise in the morning during the sunrise, and it peaks midday, and then it just plummets. Those morning conditions are perfect. That's the day I'm gonna fish, straight up, Wednesday morning. So the conditions are great, climbing pressure in the morning, and then the dropping after midday. Now, how does the solar theory come into play here though? You see, I like to use multiple sources. So I check tides for fishing and bam, what a coincidence. Extreme feeding activity right before the storm in the morning. But do you want to know why? The lunar transit coincides with the sunrise, which results in excellent prime fishing. That's crazy, the conditions are perfect, they're great. And of course, but these conditions can be tentative, especially when you check them days in advance. That's why you gotta check every single day up until the day that you go fishing. And of course, before I leave, I'm also going to check saltwater recon to look at the water color and the waves up until Wednesday. You see, and that's the process. <laughs> you see how that plays out? All three of my sources checked out, and I cross verified with multiple sources. We are good. We're going to have some great elite conditions these days. And that's how I pick how to fish. It's a pretty scientific process, and but you'll get the hang of it. I know it seems kind of difficult and confusing, but... Soon enough, after this video, you'll come up with your own elite patterns, and you'll be predicting conditions in no time. Well, that's it. And I hope you enjoyed this video, and I really hope that this will help you plan out your next fishing trip. Oh, and by the way, I got new die-cut beach bomber stickers. They're in. I designed these myself on Photoshop. Rep the gang and show everyone you're elite AF. People will know that you know all the elite fishing conditions when they see that sticker. Help support the channel. Link in the description. Thanks y'all, I really appreciate all the views.